Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Brett Bolton, and today I'm going to be talking to you about how I make musical instruments from visuals, Notch. Let's see here. A quick about me. Um, I'm a motion, motion graphics designer and musician from Las Vegas. Real, real hair there. Um, I grew up playing in local bands, and eventually I became super obsessed with creating visuals for those bands. Um, that's a band called Kimit's Kura up top, and then another solo project called Kitsy and the CPUs. Um, after I graduated college, I became a freelance sound and motion designer. Um, I ended up making a lot of content for hotels in Vegas, like slot machine, um, sound, sound effects, digital signage content, a lot of nightclub content as well. Um, in 2015, I made the move over to focus on concert visuals and lucky enough to uh, work with studios like Empirical, Silent Partners, uh, Treatment, and Neon Black for clients such as U2, Bruno Mars, NERD, and Blink-182. Currently, I'm still a freelance notch designer. Um, I've got an AV band showgirl video that we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, I make interactive installations. That's like a projected um, mural up there. Then I also have a side business called Lighten Up, which is an interactive um, projection photo booth. OK, so creating visuals for music, we're all pretty familiar with this. And most of us, um, or a lot of us, make our living from it. Um, you get a piece of recorded, pre-recorded music, um, sometimes a time code and then you make the coolest visual ever for it, and then you put that in concert, and it's awesome. It's super fun and rewarding, but um, I wanted to try reversing things a bit with Notch um, with my new project, which is Showgirl Video. Um, Showgirl Video is an AV band with my sound designer friend, Benton Quarter. Um, Benton plays guitar and keys. I played um, drums and samples. Um, you can see him on the left there, playing behind the scrim. I'm on the right, back there. Um, basically, the concept of this is we wanted to build these interconnected AV systems where the visuals create the music, but, and the music creates the visuals. And it's all happening in real time, kind of feeding back with each other. Um, we call these systems that we build um, environments. Um, these environments are treated as another band member. So we play based on what the environment plays. And then, in turn, the environment responds and changes based on what we play. Um, it makes for some real-time feedback between the audio and visuals that you can't really get with pre-rendered content. OK, blah, blah, blah. How do we actually do it? Um, there's a couple of methods we use that I'll talk to you about today. Um, one's hot zones, uh, modifier sequencers, um, aka spaghetti. We'll see why in a bit. And then brightness sampling. Um, but first, before we do that, we need to see how we can get Notch talking to Ableton. Um, currently, Notch doesn't have uh, MIDI out, so I've been opting for OSC out um, and then translating things a bit. Um, this is my kind of flowchart for that. I go Notch OSC output modifier um, to Touch Designer, which then translates the OSC to um, MIDI channels, um, whatever channel note CC you want. Then I use a virtual MIDI cable called Loop B. Um, there's a bunch out there right now. If you've used the ISC driver bus on Mac, it's very similar. Um, and then basically that virtual MIDI cable pipes down to Ableton to play the music. OK, actually, before I go to Hot Zones, I'm going to show you the setup real quick. So I'll play in here. Got to make sure. Your playhead's moving in order to get OSD out. So I've got a simple MIDI controller here with a button. There's a button. All right. So MIDI modifier in, and then an OSD output. And it's just turning on the text there. Um, if you haven't done OSC and Notch, to get that set up, you just go to your project, settings, art and OSC, OSC enabled. I'm spitting out on uh, the local, local network 4002. Okay. Cool. So that's all working inside Notch. MIDI in. Then I'm going to Touch Designer. Super simple setup. It's an OSD in patch um, set to 4002 as well. And then a MIDI out. And you can see it's just going out. So actually, I forgot to mention, um, the way that this works is it takes a specific address inside um, Notch here. So I'm spitting out um, forward slash CH7N72, which represents channel 7, note 72 in Touch Designer. So that'll automatically give you that MIDI note out of Touch Designer. So now that's going through there and sending to Ableton. So we've got this little test strip here um, set to channel 7. And there we are. So that's basically how I set that up. That's my basic workflow for these songs anyway. Um, so Hot Zones, that's the first method we use to create music. Um, basically, Hot Zones test if a point intersects with a 3D object or bounding box. Um, in 3D space, and I'll kind of show you a basic setup of that. All right, so here we go. What we have is just a simple setup here with a sphere. I've got um, a math modifier that's driving it on a sine wave. 
my MIDI modifier is just adjusting the speed. So, oh yeah, one thing I should note is um, I usually build on this 1060 and then export to a 1080 um, standalone. So the GUI really affects the performance when you're building, but it's just, just for demo today. So there'll be a couple of stalls. Um, so yeah, what this is doing is taking this test point, the shape 3D here, which is pulsing back and forth, putting it into a hot zone here, the test point, and then we've got two boxes here um, that are being tested in the zone section of the hot zone. So the cool thing with this hot zone now is it's doing all the work, but then we can use, use an extractor modifier to spit out the index of each one of those zones that's connected. So right now you can see it's testing, it's hitting one, two, or yeah, one, two, one, two. So we can make, start working on a song that way um, if you want. And then you just test for conditions. So if you want one, you just use condition modifier one, condition modifier two, and spit out two different notes via OSC output. You can also adjust your visuals. It's just turning on the alpha there. So yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, you can do something with that, or you can introduce other math modifiers to it too. So I'm just cranking up this other math modifier, making it random, so you can come up with some pretty crazy random uh, sounds if you want. Cool. All right. Now I'll show you this song Orbits that we have. Um, it uses this concept, kind of show you a basic setup of this. So what's happening here, I just went into my orbit view. Um, I'm gonna highlight these bounding boxes. Once the particles die down, you can see what's going on. So there's just a null here in the middle that's being rotated continuously with continuous modifier with a little uh, ball on the end that's being the test point. So then I've got these bounding boxes set up. And as I control the speed of this rotation, then it's creating a little sequence, a little pattern for us. Um, I can also put in another math modifier that I'm turning up right now. And that makes a different pattern because it's just going in a different um, rotation. But um, we kind of built this song around these patterns that we found within Notch and then decided what notes we wanted. And it's kind of like a nice way to build a song around the visuals and what was capable with these different patterns we found. All right, so with that, I'm going to just do a quick uh, demo of us performing this song. Um, we're playing, it's a little washed out because this is actually I'm recording a scrim. There's a scrim in front of us, and we're back behind it. Um, I'm on drums back there, Ben's on the left playing guitar. We've got some lights that go as well.
was one of our songs. Cool. And that was uh, using hot zones. All right, so another method we use is, um, actually, I'll get my little thing up here, um, modifier sequencers. So um, basically with modifier sequencers, uh, we use condition modifiers to trigger notes um, from math modifiers. I'll give you a basic demo of that. So with this, um, we have, I'll turn it down with my MIDI controller here. Where are we at? This is all driven just from one um, saw wave here. Just this math modifier just going from, here's the raw value it's spitting out, zero to one. Um, then we remap that to um, 0.5 to 8.4. This is that value there. Um, the reason we remap it to that is so when we pipe it into the quantize modifier, we get eight um, even sections to be um, spat out to these different notes. Um, let's see here. So now that we've got those kind of spitting out, then we can test for conditions one through eight and then send out each one of those different OSC outputs to whatever note we want. Um, cool thing with this too is you can change your pattern. If we wanted this to be a triangle, you can just go up and down, and so on. But yeah, then that can link up to visuals. Here's one step further. Just um, wish I could kind of go through all this and explain it all, but kind of limited with the time I've got. Um, so this is the same kind of concept we use for a, a song called Dark Ages. Um, this is the same kind of deal, but we in introduce a playhead to this. So it's testing for those different blocks vertically, zero to high, or low to high for the notes, but then we also have a playhead here. So it only triggers when it's in that playhead. So then you can uh, increase the playhead speed. And make pretty cool patterns like that. But yeah, it's all inside Notch. Um, and before I go to a demo of that, of us playing that live, I'm going to show you the last uh, method I'll be talking about today, which is brightness sampling. Um, brightness sampling uses the luminescence of the visuals to control different parameters in Ableton. Um, I'll show you a basic setup of that. Cool. So with this one, I just have a fractal image, a fractal noise being generated live here. Um, and then that's being uh, downsampled a bit. And then what's doing the work is this video sampler, which takes, uh, it's figuring out the, the brightness values from black to white and then outputting that as uh, zero to one. Um, I believe it takes, it samples the center part here. Um, that's why you downsample it. But you can see this, this is controlling just the Y parameter on this little sphere. As it gets brighter, it goes up. And the fractal noise will chill out a bit. There we go. So then you can control different parts of Ableton. I've got it on this strip here. You can see as it gets quieter, it's automatically mapped to that. So then with this fractal image, as the scene gets brighter, it's automatically controlling our visuals. Get brighter. There we go. Cool. I'm going to turn that off. All right, so now I'm gonna show you a um, the setup for a song that we have called Dark Ages that um, uses both the modifier sequencer and the um, brightness testing. And I should mention this is uh, based off of this um, iPad app called Fugue Machine that's made by Alexander Knott, um, where it's got basically just a piano roll, but then it has multiple playheads that sweep back and forth, and you can get some pretty crazy sounds based off just the multi-playhead thing. Um, so I, this is my interpretation of it in Notch. So basically, I've got these, uh, these dots that are going up and down, and it's testing for those notes on each side as the, as the two playheads sweep by. And that's a lot of fun, because you can just pause the notes, bring in brightness sampling, change the frequency, then you've got yourself a loop there if you want. Then uh, you say, I don't like that loop, I'm gonna switch it up a bit. You can play based on that, or you can just keep things running. Um, so with the brightness sampling now too, we added this in, um, in order to kind of, when we switch to the main chorus, um, you'll see we start flying through multiple versions of these planes. So then, with the brightness sampling, it's automatically kind of doing some sound design for us as things get closer. So 
So yeah, it's all real time kind of sound design. We can play along to that too. It's a lot of fun. But you can see inside Ableton, it's just controlling the EQ at the top end here with the brightness. All right, oh yeah, I mentioned um, spaghetti. I just wanted to show you why it's called spaghetti with that one. Um, let's zoom out. It's, it's this pretty uh, basic concept. But, uh, oh yeah, here we go, spaghetti. So yeah, it's, this, it's the modifier sequence uh, concept, but iterated a lot. So that's, that was fun to build. Cool, so that's um, kind of the main things I want to show you. I'll just show you um, the Dark Ages, uh, us playing that, and then I'll get out of your hair. Thank you guys very much. There's all the stuff. Thanks. <laughs>